people of the internet, my name is Johnny, welcome back to some more FNAF news. Once again, we got a whole bunch of topics to talk about, book news, merchandise news, a brand new way from YouTube, brand new way from Hex as well, and of course, you already know the drill, at this point it is impossible to have a FNAF news video without talking about some brand new info regarding the upcoming FNAF movie, which by the way, we're going to be talking about some major movie spoilers in today's video. So, if you don't want to see those, I'd maybe suggest clicking off the video when we get to that point. But before we can get to the movie, we of course have a few other topics to talk about, so let's not waste any more time. If you're brand new, consider tickling the sub button, and let's hop into the first news story of today, Tiger Rock. Which, if you don't know, is the seventh volume in the Tales from the Pizzaplex book series. It's set to release on July 4th, and believe it or not, once again, the description for the book has changed. The third story now reads, and Danny's idea to get the attention of his high school crush comes with unimaginable consequences. Very interesting that this third story keeps getting its description changed, we're just gonna have to wait and see what exactly the story holds when it releases this July. Next up, we've got some official preview pages for the upcoming cookbook releasing in September. First up, we have Game Rant exclusively revealing the recipe for Foxy's Pirate Plunder Bars. I'm not gonna go through and read all the ingredients and instructions on how to make these recipes, but I'll have them up on screen if you want to pause it, take a look for yourself. Next up, we have Bonnie's Ultimate Burger revealed exclusively by Bloody Disgusting. It was very interesting because the three recipes we're looking at in today's video were all exclusively revealed by a whole bunch of different articles. And finally, we have Chica's Thai Chicken Salad revealed exclusively by CBR. If you forgot, the cookbook contains over 40 different recipes inspired by the games. A few other recipes we know of but don't know what they look like just yet are Freddy's Pepperoni Express, Foxy's Cover Cooler, and L Chips Nachos. Moving on now to some brand new merchandise, we've got some security breach wash shorts. These were found on Hot Topic's website. No clue why the hell these exist, but they're there if you want to go pick them up. Featuring Glamrock Freddy printed on one leg and the FNAF Security Breach logo on the other. Next up, we got some small Funko news, and I quite literally mean small Funko news because it was revealed exclusively by Tony Mario Bros once again that FNAF Biddy Pops, which if you don't know, are very, very tiny. I think they're like one inch tall boxes of Funko Pops have been confirmed. We're going to be getting a Freddy Fazbear four pack, a Foxy the Pirate four pack, a Nightmare Bonnie four pack, and also Ballora four pack. Not exactly sure when these guys are going to be releasing, but in the graphic, you can see an example of what the Biddy Pops look like and how exactly they're organized in the four packs with the last one, the fourth one in the pack actually being a mystery character. So that's going to be very exciting to see what those mystery characters are. Moving on over to YouTube, because they have officially announced and released their next figures wave of FNAF products. And as you can see, it is a second wave of Security Breach figures, only available for seven days, so act fast if you want to go get these guys. You've got the wet floor sign bot. You've got a brand new Vanny figure. They officially call her Hide and Seek Vanny. You've also got Burn Trap, as well as a two-sided figure of the daycare attendant. And speaking of Burn Trap... Oh... Oh, what's that? YouTube's was actually kind enough to send me over a prototype of their upcoming burn trap figure. I won't spend too long on this guy because we do have a few other topics to talk about, but just to give you a sneak preview of the figure, this is what he looks like. He's absolutely insane, crazy attention to detail, and once again, just a huge shout out and thank you to YouTube's for being so thoughtful and thinking of me and sending me something so amazing as a freaking prototype of one of their figures. Continuing on with the YouTube's news, we got our first teaser for their upcoming Mangle plushie. This is probably one of the most anticipated merchandise we've gotten from YouTube's. The design was actually made by Spooky the Kitty over on Twitter. This is what their full concept art looks like, and expect the plushie to look pretty similar to this design. And also, lastly, for YouTube's news, the other day they held another AMA over on Twitter. I'm not going to go over every single detail, but if you want to pause the video, read through all the questions and answers, feel free to. Most importantly, they announced that the Withered's Wave will be releasing hopefully in the summer. A Spring Trap plushie is officially in the works, and they're going to hopefully release it later this year. You've got the Help Wanted figures featuring Dreadbear, Shadow Mangle, Glitch Trap, and Grim Foxy. I believe those were the figures announced for that wave. Also released 
releasing later this year. Moving on now to Hex, it's been a bit since we've talked about them, but they officially released their Wave A Fanverse plushies. The first wave features Pop Goes the Weasel from Pop Goes, and also Candy the Cat from Five Nights at Candies. As you can see, this amazing art illustrated by Turntail. They're up on the website, once again, just like YouTube's, I'll leave that link down below if you want to go pick these guys up. And also, in a tweet, Hex showed off their cards for Candy and Pop Goes. And lastly, for Hex News, in a recent video, Daco actually teased their upcoming what appears to be a Withered Golden Freddy plushie. In the past, Daco has mentioned that after Wave 4, the Withered Animatronics, he's hopefully going to have a special launch of plushies featuring the Puppet, Mangle, and this Withered Golden Freddy. So this is our first look at what appears to be Wave 5. And lastly, the news topic for today's video is, of course, the FNAF movie. First up, we got some brand new actors involved with the film to take a look at, and then later on, we've got some, once again, pretty major spoilers for the film. So if you don't want to know about some new casting, maybe click off the video now, but I will also give another warning when we get to major spoiler territory in today's video. But first up, we have Christian Stokes, officially announced to be playing Hank in the film. We're not entirely sure who this Hank character is going to be, what their role is going to be in the film. A lot of people have pointed out that Hank is apparently a nickname for Henry, so that of course has led a few fans to believe that this is going to be our movie universe version of Henry Emily, of course the creator of the original FNAF animatronics, the business partner of William Afton. I'd love to know your thoughts and theories in the comments down below. Next up we also have Michael P. Sullivan announcing on his Facebook page linking to my boy 3C Films video with the caption, first look at a movie I'm filming. In the comments section of the post, he did reply to someone clarifying that his character was created solely for the movie and that it does not appear anywhere else in the franchise, so that's pretty interesting. A lot of people have been linking back to the day one of filming picture Jason Blum tweeted out that involves what appears to be maybe Sullivan's character. For a while now, people just assumed this was Matthew Lillard's purple guy, but now that we know that Sullivan is involved with the film, a lot of people have been once again linking back to this picture. So I'd love to know what are your thoughts and theories? Do you think this is Sullivan? What do you think this brand new character is going to be in the film? And now we move on to some pretty big spoiler territories. Once again, this is your final warning before we talk about the major spoilers. First up, we have Josh Hutcherson the other day making an appearance at the set of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place. What's fascinating about this picture is that not only is Josh outside of a metal gate blocking the entrance to the establishment, we also have a whole bunch of vines growing around the poles in the parking lot and also the outside of the facade. This has led a lot of people to believe that this place is actually closed down when Josh first gets there. Whether or not this is in a flashback and maybe they eventually restore the establishment and then he gets the job as a security guard, or maybe it's towards the end of the film where all the events of the games have taken place, he's done his job as a security guard, and the place gets closed down. Now why he would be returning to it later on, not entirely sure. Once again, love to know what are your theories, what do you think's going on with this scene. And also the other day people were able to sneak a picture of one of the animatronics actually on set. This was the picture, as you can see, it is Freddy. Fazbear. A lot of people have been speculating it could also be Golden Freddy. I think that's a bit less likely. I feel like it would make a bit more sense if it was Freddy Fazbear himself. Taking a closer look at Freddy, we can see just how massive he is compared to everyone else on the set. Some people have pointed out he's about the same height as one person in the group, so maybe this is the actor who's going to be portraying Freddy Fazbear dressed up in the costume. However, if you also take a very, very close look at Freddy's arm, you can see what appears to be some animatronic parts inside of it. So whether or not this is the actual full fledged animatronic of Freddy, or if it's just a costume someone's going to be wearing acting out the motions of Freddy, we're not entirely sure, but it is just absolutely crazy to see our first look at what the characters of the animatronics are going to be looking like in the film, shockingly accurate to what they look like in the games. This honestly just has me absolutely stoked to see them actually moving around in the movie. It's going to be crazy. Something else that's crazy is probably the biggest leak we've had for this entire film. Something that, unfortunately, I knew about a few days ago was kind of hoping the original poster was going to delete it before it got, you know, widely spread across the internet. That didn't happen. But whatever. The cat's out of the bag now. Someone got a tour of Jim Henson's Creature Shop the other day, and they posted this photo to their Instagram. Ignoring the mass of Dead Mouse and King Kong, of course, if we look at the top left of your screen, 
we can see a mask of Springtrap. Now, interestingly enough, there's been a pretty big debate going on whether or not this is actually Springtrap. And I know that seems like a weird thing to fight over, but I mean, just take a closer look at the mask. It's much more golden. It has a very bright yellow aesthetic to it that Springtrap usually doesn't have. He's more green. You can also see green eyes inside the suit that Springtrap traditionally does not have. However, you of course do have the mask exposing a bunch of flesh. The top of the right ear has been taken off so it's very confusing whether or not this is springtrap or maybe it's kind of a how do i explain this predecessor to springtrap because keep in mind this is only the first film assuming this is for the first movie and they're not just already making props for the future films it'd be very strange to see fully fledged springtrap making an appearance in the very first film when we have three confirmed and scott wanting to base the first three films off the first three fnaf games now maybe this is an early prototype of the mask and it's going to be a bit more green in the future or once again maybe this is just a tease for springtrap himself a lot of people have been speculating this could be for a post credit scene of william afton fighting off the spirits like he does in the fnaf 3 minigame going Going into the spring bonnie suit and of course becoming spring trap eventually getting spring locked dying all that good stuff <laughs> it could be this is just going to be an early predecessor to what will eventually become spring trap in the film's universe and he's just a bit more uptight maybe this is still fairly recent after the spring lock incident I'm not entirely sure. Once again, I'd love to know your theories and your thoughts in the comments down below. Some very crazy stuff, and once again, I'd love to know what are your thoughts and theories in the comments down below. But that is going to do it for this FNAF News video. Hopefully you all enjoyed, and I will see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.